Hi, this is Coach Sandy Nightpaper. And I'm Coach Sage Kennedy. And welcome to Ask the Coaches. Today we have a question from Thomas, and he would like to know how about a 325 marathon guy from Flat Denmark should train for Trans um, He's tried it a couple years. He tried it a couple years ago, um, but it sounds like he had a problem with his shoes because the terrain there is pretty extreme, and he it's quite steep and loose lava that made it hard, hard for him to pretty much get a firm grip of his shoe. So he's asking how to train for that. Yeah, so you know, a lot we see this with athletes who coach, they run pretty fast road marathons and then they also mix it up though with, with sky running type of events like mm -hmm. ultras, pretty extreme mountain ultras. And if you don't know Trans Volcania, it's a, on a volcanic island and it has 14,000 feet of climbing about over 45 mm -hmm. miles. Uh, and it's very, uh, there's some technical bits, but also on the main climb, it's a 50K climb, uh, there's a lot of loose rock, volcanic rock, and you're kind of slipping, as well as steep pitches, steep grades that go up to 20% grade or even steeper sometimes. So it's a really tough race, uh, especially if you're coming from the flatlands or mm -hmm. you're used to running road marathons to transition into such an extreme uh, mountainous ultra. Mm -hmm is definitely uh, take some consideration. So I think that's what we'll start with in our answer. Yeah, and just for so everyone can apply this to themselves. Um, I, I think a lot of people are in the situation where they train for a race where it's hard for them to mimic the terrain or the type of race um, that they're doing. And I lost my you don't you don't know exactly till you get there sometimes especially if it's an on an exotic island yeah so you can never travel out there so it's like but for like a race like Transvolcania like there's videos on it that you can just YouTube and get a, at least a decent idea of some of the terrain so do your research beforehand see if there's a course video a lot of race directors do do that now or at least read the descriptions find what other people ought to say about the race and just try to get the best idea of you can of the race that you're training for. Yeah, I look up the Strava vertical, the elevation profiles mm -hmm. of people that have run it on like Strava and see what percent grade some of the hill climb segments are. And then, so then, you know, if at your disposal, what do you have in your training environment that could kind of mimic that stress? Well, at Trans you got a lot of climbing. So, uh, you know, maybe he has to get on a treadmill mm -hmm. and ramp up that incline as high as it goes. Most of the treadmills top out at 15%, but maybe you have to start you know, practice power hiking up a 15% grade on a treadmill for, you know, a 40 minute up-tempo, all uphill type of run to get in that vertical. And you could get in quite a bit of vertical on a treadmill when it's ramped up at 15% yeah. grade because it's a constant climb. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's one method yeah. there that we would employ is the treadmill as a tool to climb. Mm -hmm. And you can find any hills uh, in your area too. Like I know you live in a flat area, but I'm guessing there's at least one hill somewhere or even like a staircase. So use that. You can do hill repeats up it. You can even do hill repeats, but do it at your easy, moderate effort or at least try to get it there. And just practice running up and down, up and down. Um, I know that can seem a little bit boring, but at least you're getting that downhill stress too, which I think is important. So use what you have. Um, but then going on to the actual race day, my suggestion, at least for somebody probably at your level or in your situation, maybe just start off a little bit easier than you normally would for a race. Just because, especially like a race with Transvolcania, it is such a long climb. I can't remember how many miles it is, almost straight up. Yeah, 50, the first 50 Ks you hit the top of the mm -hmm. island, so. So that's, that would be something I would have in the back of my mind as I start the race. Like I should probably start off a little bit easier than normal so I can at least feel fairly strong at the top of the climb. Yeah, well, in that race it's about surviving the climb, but it is a, that kind of race and a lot of European races that I've experienced, it is a, a mad rush at the start and mm -hmm. people are going out at like their 10K pace. Uh, and so you want to hold back on that sprint. It's, it's very exciting. Uh, but I, I would say most people, including myself, actually, at Transvolcania, take that climb out way too fast, way too hard, way too early, and we end up suffering in the middle of the climb, and we're only halfway through the entire race, and your climbing legs get shot. So it's better to always, like Sandy said, start really conservative at the base of a hill. And any hill you see, it's not like, oh, I want to attack this hill hard. You'd be like, I need to gradually ease into this hill. and. You know, if I survive it, maybe I could speed up as I'm cresting over the top. But if you 
you know, throw everything into the bottom of the hill after a couple of minutes, you're like, I didn't pace myself on this hill. And you still yeah. have 400 meters to go. And that's the thing, if, like, if you start off slow, you can always increase your pace, where if you start off too fast, I mean, you're just going backwards from there, really. Yeah. And then go, you, um, Thomas mentioned terrain. I know that's a big part. And so my thought was, even if you can't mimic it where you live, mentally prepare for that type of terrain before the race starts. So know that when you get to that terrain you're not comfortable with, that you're not gonna like freak out and start walking because you're so uncomfortable. Just say, I'm gonna do the best I can. I'm gonna pay attention to where I can step. I'm just gonna do everything I can to meet, keep moving forward. I'm gonna work with the terrain and, and not get stressed out and have my heart rate go up because I'm so angry at or uncomfortable with the train, just relax into it, do the best you can, look at where you can step. Yeah, and I, you know, I just envisioned that training in the winter in Boulder. Even in April, we had a lot of snow on the trail, so I was mm -hmm. like slipping in the snow while I was power hiking up a mountain. I envisioned being at Translocania in the hot sand, mm -hmm. slipping in the volcanic rock, because we don't, we don't have a lot of sand around here to train in either, so, mm -hmm. uh, you know, any resistance type of training and mentally preparing, like Sandy said, as well as a little bit of heat training. Sometimes you get pretty hot and sunny on that island uh, if you're not used to that or you're coming from a cold winter environment. So I just wear extra layers of clothes and be a little uncomfortable and, and warm uh, yeah. in my winter training here to prepare for the heat. Yeah, and I think with challenges like that, you always have the choice whether to fear it or get stressed out about it or to embrace it and try to stay positive through that challenge. So just know how you want to embrace that challenge before you get to it in the race. Just going in with that positive mindset can make be the difference between you still running or at least doing a good power hike between you walking and saying, I'm going to quit at this next day station. Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah, so thanks for asking the question. We hope you enjoyed another episode of Ask the Coaches. Yeah, and uh, be sure to like our Facebook page uh, for future training questions and uh, we'll try to answer uh, a lot more of these in the future. So thanks for your support.